Now, in my design center, the first thing you want to do is consider what size hoop you're going to use because this is going to be a container. So I'll go into the shapes and I'll choose the hoop setting and I want to use a nine and a half by nine and a half hoop. Let's go into our settings and go to page nine and I'll choose to have inches and choose okay. Now I'll select the nine and a half by nine and a half hoop and I can choose whether I want to have an offset or not. And what this means is how far inside that hoop it will stitch within the embroiderable area. I'll leave it at that default and choose OK. Now what I want to do is I want to set this up so it's a no-sew line. So you see the no-sew icon here and I'll take the bucket and apply it. You'll hear click and because I had selected no so it's already applied it to this. This is a reference only because I'm going to use it for my background fill. Now I'll go into my settings and I want to, and excuse me, now I will go into my shapes and I'll choose a shape Let's say I'm working on a quilt of valor and I want to have a star. So I'll choose this star shape, but I need to go on and resize it right now. I want it to be about four and a half inches. So I'm resizing this proportionally and I have about four and a half inches here. And I can go ahead and move it to the center of the hoop. Now what I want to do is to choose OK, and I want to apply my placement line. I'll go into settings for the line properties. We don't have a single stitch. I'll choose this double running stitch, and I like to choose a darker color, and I'll choose OK. I'll take my bucket, and I'll apply that against this stitch. Now the next step that I want is to go into adjust my stitch length. In that case, I do want to look at millimeters because I don't know stitches and in inches. So I'll go to next and I'll change this to about 2.3 millimeters and choose okay. So what this is going to do is to stitch the placement line. In embroidery, I'll use it as a cut line for my scanning cut. And I'll explain that in a moment. So now I want to save this to memory. Uh, I have a USB stick in my machine. I can save it on my USB stick or I can save it to my machine. I'll go ahead and save it to the USB stick. We'll go ahead and choose return. And now what I want to do is I want to add my tack down. So for my tack down, I'll go into my settings. I'll choose this V stitch. I'll choose purple, choose OK, take the bucket and apply it to this line. I'll go to next. And what I want to do is I'll make this so that it's about one and a half millimeters. I want to catch the fabric. But one of the things that I don't want to do is to have this extend beyond my satin stitch that I'll have for my applique. I'll go ahead and choose OK. Now I also want to remove the thickness and make that one. So I only want it to go around one time. And I'll go ahead and save this to memory. And I'll save that to my USB stick. We'll choose return. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add our satin stitch. For the satin stitch, I'll go into my settings, choose that satin stitch. Let's choose a green, choose OK, take the bucket and apply it. Now what we want to do is go to next and we'll increase the size of this to three and a half millimeters and choose OK. The next thing that I want to do is to save this to memory. So I'll save it to my USB stick and I'll choose return. The last step is I do want to stitch this as part of a quilt block. So I'll go ahead and go into my region properties right here and I'll select a fill. 
In this case, I'll go ahead and select one of the decorative fills and the fill that I want to use is number 25. I'll choose OK. I like to choose a dark color. We'll choose blue and we'll choose OK. Now we'll take that bucket and we'll apply that in the background. Now what we want to do is we want to go ahead and go to next so we can update the size and parameters of this fill. I want this to be about 160% because I want this to be a, a larger fill. I'll choose OK. And then the next thing that I want to do, if I'm satisfied with the appearance of this, I want to go in and change or make the decision if I want the outline on. If you want an outline on because you want to have this complete along the edges here, you would go ahead and choose to turn this on right here. I don't want the outline on because quite honestly, this is going to be within my seam line. So what I'll do is I'll change my thickness to this single run, although when you change your thickness, it will have some backtracking so it can complete this design, but it won't be as thick as a triple running stitch. Now this icon will not appear if you do not have upgrade kit number one. So the next thing I need to do is save this to memory and I'll save it to my USB stick. Now I'm ready to go to home. I'll, I can exit my design center. I'll go to embroidery. And what I want to do is go to the pocket. I need to go to my USB stick. And in my USB stick, where I'll find these files are in the B pocket. So in the B pocket, you can see that I have my placement stitch right here. And you notice this is a PHX file. What I want to do is go ahead and set my placement stitch. I'll go to edit and I do want to change the thread color on this and move to the brother thread chart. There are actually two brother thread charts. One of those is called country and the other one I believe is brother embroidery. You'll notice down here at the bottom of the screen and let me make sure my camera is low enough. I'll point to it. You can see right here it looks like scissors. I'm going to choose that. That is applique material. Now when I say this design to my USB stick, I'll take it to my scan and cut, which is a DX230 Disney. Or if you have a, 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 a DX model that's a 225, it will read these stitch files. And I'll go ahead and choose OK. Now the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to choose add. I'll go back to my pocket and I'll locate that tack down stitch. I'll choose set. So now you notice I have two colors. I'm going to change the color of that tack down stitch. So I'll go into that color and I want to make sure that I'm on the tack down stitch and I'll just change the color of it to red. All right, the next thing I want to do is choose add. I'll go back into my pocket. And in this case, if, if I just wanted to have the applique, I would go ahead and choose the applique star that's a satin stitch. But I do want to have the background as well, so I'll go ahead and select this file, and I'll choose set. So let's look at our design and let's watch it in the stitch play out. So we'll go in the edit screen. You can go up here to the hoop. What I like to do is I like to visualize that hoop on the screen. So here is my nine and a half by nine and a half hoop that came with my machine. I'll go ahead and I'll watch this stitch out and we'll talk about it. So here is my placement stitch. It's now tacking down. It's stitching that background fill. And I can speed this up. And then at, after it stitches the background fill, 
it will go in and stitch my applique. Now, I know many of you are going to ask me, well, what if I have a design where I want to create an applique? You need to think about several things. In many instances, appliques are created where one piece is over another. Let me show you what I'm talking about. We'll go back to my design center. And let's just retrieve a couple of shapes. So let's say that what I have was this flower right here and I'll choose okay. And let's add another shape. And let's say that other shape is this leaf and I'll choose okay. Now let me move that leaf. Let me resize it and I'll make it smaller. And I'll go ahead and I want to rotate that leaf while it's selected. So I'll rotate it. And let's say that you wanted to have an applique that was like this and where part of this leaf is cut off. Well, what you're going to have to do when you have an applique like that, you're going to have to edit some of the stitches around this and you'll have to manually apply the stitches and you'll also have to have a space between your objects. So let me show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to make this larger. The first thing I need to do is go in here and I need to erase some of this. So I'm going to erase a portion of this leaf and if I was to apply a, a stitch to this right now, it's going to apply it all the way around this object. And let me make this smaller and I'll show you what I'm talking about. I'll go into my settings for line fill and let's just make this a satin stitch so you can see it and I'll make it red. So if I take the bucket and I apply it to this, it went all the way around and let me zoom in so you can see it. We'll take the hand you can see that it's applied it to this leaf as well. Well, obviously I wouldn't want that. So what I'm going to have to do if I'm creating layers of applique, I have to think about what is under the top layer. And I'll have to take my eraser and I would make it very, very small. And I have to disconnect those two pieces. Well, the first thing that I would do is I would erase this section here or actually that was a mistake, so let me undo. The first thing that I would do is I would erase right here where they're connecting. Now, right now that looks like it's fairly large, but let's go back out to 100%. I can now color this leaf a different color and I could draw in a little bit more of that line if I wanted but I could go in and choose green and select this and take the bucket and apply it to that particular leaf. And you can see that right here. You have to think about these kinds of things and you have to think about how you're going to go on and fill this in where you're missing about one stitch. Or what you'll have to do is you'll have to build it so you move, you complete your top object and you move it on top of your leaf and you place it manually yourself. You can always scan something in, scanning it here, but it's much easier to create appliques in software than it is in my design center if they're complicated and have multiple layers. I'm Terry Maffitt. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for your time today.